Huh? Okay. Come on, come on. Yeah, I probably have to, but this is this is a problem. This is a problem. Oh no, still 91 kilometers to the guest house. I'm not gonna make that. I'm not gonna make that. I'm gonna go back to Fishtown. It's 11 kilometers. I don't think I'll, I'll, I'll manage 91 k's like this. I'm not gonna get up any hill, even. It's over. <laughs> <sighs> My bike is broken. My bike is broken. Yeah, I can only go first gear. First, only one gear. I need to go, I think, go back fish town. There's guest house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is, yeah. From where? Hmm? From where? From where? Yeah. Me, yeah. Netherlands. Can you, can I hold on to your bike to fish town? Yeah. Yeah? To do well. Yes. You can tow me. Yeah, yeah. I hold on to your shoulder. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We try. <laughs> See? Let me see if I can put in neutral. Yeah, put in neutral. And now, now is it neutral? To tie it. To tie it. Yeah. Maybe. To try it. You wanna try? Yeah. The best way is to tie to the foot pack. The, to the foot pack. No, that you should do the foot pack. Yeah, I think that's the safest one. Maybe only one side, or. Yeah. I want to use this side to tie here. A 
okay. Thanks, man. What's your name? Prince. Prince. <laughs> nice to meet you. My name is Nora Lee. Today, what an absolute other legend! He just stops and helps me. It's unbelievable. I don't really know what I'm gonna do. Yes? Alright, this works. I don't really know what I'm gonna do when I reach Fishtown. But I suppose I'll figure it out when I get there. I just wanna give throttle, but I can't. It's good. Siberian rain. Uh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes.
Oh man, this is madness. It's like nine kilometers to town. How did I drive 10 kilometers so fast? It's the first time I'm being towed. Yeah. walking So does this still count as motorcycling Africa? <laughs> oh, I am on a motorcycle. Come on, let's talk with them. Okay. It's me again. The, the clutch plates are burnt. The clutch plates, clutch plates are burnt. I cannot change gear. You can change at the time. It was straight for the bearing, but it's the time. Hey, grandma, can I share my thing that for you play? Yes. I think you can see. Yeah. I'm gonna go to a guest house. Huh? Now I go to guest house. Guest house? Guest house. Yeah, no? yeah in, in uh, yeah, the fish town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You will leave a motorbike in the morning to carry there or you will carry it with you? Huh? You will leave it back at a checkpoint? No, no, no. no. He yeah. tows me. Oh, you carry me? Yeah. No problem. Okay. No problem. Oh, go no, first. find a way to get to that border. Okay. Either a tow or a car, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. oh, Why so the problem on the bike? What happened to it? The clutch plates are burned. What was your name again? Thompson. 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 Thompson Gwen. My man Lawrence. Lawrence Gwen. Oh, he's your brother? Yeah. Lawrence your brother? Lawrence my big brother. You know what I mean? So, so your big brother helped me today? Yeah, yeah. I turn around the bike or? Uh -huh. ah. All right, update, because I think all of my cameras died. I have no idea what I managed to record from today. It was just so chaotic and hectic and I was just trying to kind of get myself somewhere that uh, I couldn't just stop and look after the cameras. Anyway, let's hope that I captured a lot. But anyway, to give you an update, I'm now in a guest house and there is no electricity. 
so I'm giving myself some light with my phone. <laughs> um, I am in Fishtown. So basically what happened, I said goodbye to Lawrence and I made it about 10 kilometers out and ah, the clutch plates are just gone. I, I couldn't get past first gear anymore. And I'm like, it's absolutely pointless to try. I still had to go 91 kilometers to Plebo, where I was planning to stay, which is a bigger town. I was like, there's no point. And it's just like, as I turn around, the first guy on the motorcycle that sees me, he stops and he, he pulls me back in. It's, it's unbelievable. It's like the Liberian people are really something else. They are so kind and helpful and people help each other. It's yeah, I'm blown away. Um, so he tows me all the way back here. Uh, didn't go very easy. <laughs> we had to stop several times to push and pull and retie and get up the hill. It started pouring with rain. I arrived like, completely drenched. Everything completely, completely drenched. Uh, two other guest houses were full because apparently there's like some soccer game going on or something. It's busy in town. Eventually I find this room, or oh, they help me, because I bumped into the brother of Lawrence. Can you imagine this? So I'm talking to this guy, I, I don't know how we got to it, but it turns out to be the brother of Lawrence. So anyway, his brother helps find this place and then, yeah, they all tow me here. He's also going to be the one who's going to tow me all the way to the border with Côte d'Ivoire, Ivory Coast. That is now the plan. At 8 in the morning, he's going to be here and he's going to tow me. It's 140 kilometers, but it's all paved. I, I don't have a plan for when I reach Ivory Coast, because then it's still 460 kilometers to Abidjan. Like, it's far. And I think it's all paved. But it's really far and I don't think I'll find anyone who's going to tow me with a motorcycle 460 kilometers. So I should try and find a truck or a car or something. I don't know, I don't know. But for now I'm just like, let's try and get to the border. That's the only thing I can do now. I'm not going to find any parts or mechanics or anything here in Liberia. So I have to make it to Abidjan anyway. Um, now with a lot more problems. <laughs> I had before. Can you imagine what a day? What a day. I don't even know where to begin talking about this day. Uh, it's just been so crazy. So much has happened that I'm just like, I, I can't even wrap my head around all that has happened. And, you know, at some point, so after, so right after Lawrence gave me back Alaska, as soon as I start trying to pull away, I notice like something's wrong because I let go of the clutch lever a little bit and normally the bike goes forward and nothing happens and uh, like the, 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 how you call that, the point where it takes, it's like really far out and I'm like, oh, something's really wrong. And then I'm like, the clutch plates are burned. And I've had this before, well, that time I did it myself, remember, in Iran. This time I didn't do it, but uh, to be fair, I don't know how else we would have gotten through that mud. So I'm not blaming Lawrence at all. It's just, we just had to get through it and this is the cost. Um, but so I'm actually amazed that we made it all the way to Fishtown because I think we rode for another an hour and a half maybe. And I don't know how much I captured on camera, but it was still really muddy after that. There were, I think, two more places with stuck vehicles. One time a car and another time like trucks again, like fuel trucks. And it was just, uh, I f it was it was bad. So I'm pretty amazed that I got through that pretty okay. I mean, I could notice like, okay, shifting is not going well, but it was only when we started to go a bit faster when the road became better that I was like, this bike's not going, this bike's not going. And yeah, now it's not going at all anymore. Um, so yeah, uh, I have to make it to Abidjan to, and then try to get parts there. And well, it's a whole mission, but I'm just trying to take it one step at a time and just try to <laughs> get to the border tomorrow and then I'll see, I suppose. Um, of course, I, uh, people will ask me this. Of course, I paid everyone who helped me. Well, in fact, I gave almost all my money to Lawrence and to the guy who pulled me back into town. I just had enough money to pay for this guest house and I still have a little bit of money, uh, cash, left in dollars because they'll either take Liberian dollars here or US dollars. But my Liberian dollars, well, I gave all of those to Lawrence already and then I gave again money to Lawrence because he escorted me all the way down here. I don't think he expected any money, to be honest. This guy has a heart of gold, I promise you. 
but uh, yeah, obviously I just wanted to do something back. So anyway, I do have CFA. Remember, remember that I said something about this a while back that I was like, I'm not gonna change all my CFAs because I'm gonna, there's gonna be other countries that have that. So in Ivory Coast, I have some money. And on the way, uh, so tomorrow, on the way to the border, we'll pass Plebo, which is the town where I was planning to stay tonight. And there's supposed to be an ATM. So I'm sure I can pay everyone <laughs> uh, enough. But um, yeah, I'm just blown away by the locals here. Like, yeah, I'm really blown away. They are so kind and helpful. And I really needed help today. Well, and tomorrow and probably the day after. What else is there to say? Um, crazy adventure. Yeah, what else is there to say? I feel so bad for all those people stuck in that mud pit, hey? And some of them go there knowing that it's bad and they think, no, I'm sure we'll make it. But like some of the first ones that have been there for a month, a month. And like, what do they do? They sleep there, somebody's bringing them food. I, I have no idea. There were so many people there and I didn't count the vehicles, but maybe it was up to 50? I don't know, I just saw vehicles everywhere. Well, I was most, mostly focused on the mod, but there were a lot of people stuck there. And yeah, it's only motorbikes that could get through and not, nothing bigger. So yeah, I really feel for those people just sitting there, being out there. Uh, I mean, it looked like they were cutting some trees to put on top of the mud. Um, I think that's why I had to take the first detour. But um, yeah. It's just unbelievable that this is the state of like some of the roads here in Liberia and yeah you gotta take them if you're in this part of the country that that's the road I think maybe that will also lead to people helping each other you know we have all probably everyone has been stuck at some point and you have to help each other and push out and but yeah some of the guys I saw them they were using shovels you know to try and dig out a truck or it's crazy and yeah Apparently the government doesn't do anything for these roads. Um, so yeah, but from now on it's all tar. So okay, so they do something apparently, but yeah. Uh, from now on it's tar. So that's good for the towing because yeah, towing through the mud, that, that's definitely a no-go I think. Anyway, I'm super tired. I'm gonna end this video. It's a lot of talking anyway. So yeah, uh, that was it for today. I think this was a very long episode. <laughs> Um, let's see, fingers crossed, I'm gonna make it to Abidjan very soon and get Alaska looked after because Africa is destroying my bike. Or maybe I'm destroying my bike. So yeah, fingers crossed, I'll be able to make it to Abidjan with some help of some kind people uh, that I meet and that I can have Alaska fixed. And um, yeah, I don't know what else there to say. Um, that was it. I hope you liked it somehow. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up. Leave me a comment. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you in the next video.